viewers, wherever you are, hello and welcome to this new episode of your program, Love Spectrum. Last time, we talked about a very special and peculiar personality, which is the histrionic personality. The personality that loves to be the center of attention, loves to be surrounded by lights, and always, you know, pretends to be an actor and looks for people's applause. You know, they, it, wants the, it always wants a round of applause, people to applaud it for its great performance. <laughs> Today, we will talk about another special personality, a personality, the, a personality that is not very far away from the previous one. Today, we will talk about the narcissistic personality. And narcissistic comes from Narcissus, the beautiful flower. It's a name of a perfume, something related to uh, mythology, love. It's, it's, it's a very extra romantic and um, a beautiful name. So what is this personality all about? To delve deeper into the crypts of this personality, I'm really delighted to be accompanied today by our very usual and very special guest at the same time, Odis Nasser, the university professor and the clinical hypnotherapist. Odis, hello and welcome to the program. Hi, Muhammad. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. And it's a real pleasure having you. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> uh, we look forward to having you time and again. I enjoy these sessions. Uh, Udis, to start off, what are the outlines of this personality, um, a narcissistic personality? What are the most important traits? Just, just the outlines, and then we'll go deeper into the details. Sure. Um, well, narcissistic, the word narcissistic comes, from, like you mentioned, it's a Greek methodology about a guy. His name is Narcissus, Narcissus, I think, where he is, um, was walking in the river, and I think he's the son of a river, and he saw his reflection in the river, and he fell in love with himself because he thought he was so beautiful, like the flower you mentioned. So the word narcissist comes from... Um, it means beauty, but it is actually a mental disorder when somebody has so much of it. So in a very grand and specific way, it's, it's a personality disorder that's characterized by someone who is over self-assured, over self-loved, over um, feeling too um, important, or um, they are constantly looking for approval from other people. It's like feeling their self-worth is so grand. That's really what a narcissist is in a short way. So um, if we say that histrionic personality always loves to be under the light and on stage, and we say that narcissistic personality always loves to look at itself in the mirror, loves the mirror, always like, likes to admire how beautiful they are, how smart they are, how great they are. Are they rather like a bombastic, um, you know, they, they like to brag and show off a lot? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, similarities between the two. They're both under the same cluster. So there's a lot of people who are kind of between both lines. You could be histrionic, you could be narcissistic, you could be both because there's a lot, there's a flight. There's a lot of similarities between them, but the, do you want me to tell you the main difference now or should we discuss it later? Let's discuss this at a later point, but here I'm just trying to, you know, take little baby steps to try to find our way towards the narcissistic personality. So uh, narcissistic personality, again, like they are so full of themselves, they, they admire themselves. They think that, that they are the, the very best people and so on. Um, their self-worth is so grand. They're so too important. important. Grand, exactly. So uh, do narcissistic personalities have dual personalities or are they one and the same at the same time. So um, would they, um, can they be hypocrites? Can they be double-faced? Can they sort of uh, throw a bait to, um, you know, or try to be predators for someone? So uh, if, they, if they are throwing a bait or trying to be predators, they might play the role of the nice, sweet, humble guy and then later on they would be they would show their true colors or are they always too obvious 
Um, no, they're not obvious, but you brought up a really good point. They are known to be manipulative. They will manipulate you and they will use you as much as they can and they will never show you that. So they're very manipulative um, and they will take whatever measures to get to where they want to go. So that's the bad thing about narcissists is they don't feel the guilt or the shame. Um, extremely manipulative, extremely using other people for themselves. They're very selfish. Um, so, and unfortunately, sometimes later on, people will find out who they are, but a narcissist will never show you their true colors. You will find people around them will see it, but they never see it. They're never wrong. And, um, can they go as far as to pretend that they are so romantically in love with you while they're not, while they have zero feelings for you just to use you as a pawn? A narcissist cannot love. So they don't love. They're, it's impossible for them to love. They don't love. Um, so, but they can pretend, though, right? They can, they can pretend to be lovers or they can't? No, they, I don't believe so. I personally believe they just can manipulate you to get to what they want, uh, whether you're a lover, a friend, uh, a family member. But love, they only love themselves and only themselves. Histrionic can love, not narcissists. Okay, so a narcissist can, can love one person which is themselves. Only, and only themselves. Period. They cannot love someone else. So, um, okay, you, to throw a bait, like if I want to manipulate someone, mm -hmm. I must always use the carrot and the stick, some kind of a bait. Like, what is their bait? How do they manipulate people? What is it, what is it for the other people to be manipulated? Do you know the term gaslighter? Have you heard of this word, gaslighters? You know what a gaslighter is? Okay, so that's their bait is meaning just in case if somebody doesn't know, a gaslighter is someone who would make you feel so bad, they will make you feel so ashamed and so guilty to make you feel sorry for them. So they are known to, I'm trying to find the right word for it, but except for gaslighting, it's the only way, like most people around them, they're the victims of narcissists because narcissists to get to what they want or what they need, they will make everybody else a punching bag. That's how they get what they want. So if they have to pretend to love you, oh yeah, they will. If they have to pretend that they're nice, of course they will. In front of you, they're beautiful people. Well, but, would they play the role of the oppressed while they are the oppressors? Like would they play oh. the role of the humble, weak people have been crushed, you know, like all the world has been against me and they're the victims always and they're the ones that do not need therapy and everybody else around them need therapy and they're always abused to them in their mind and they're always the victims and they're always the ones that need help and they need they're weak and they always need people because they seek attention like crazy they want attention that's like the key thing attention and approval they will do anything to get the attention and the approval whatever it takes and but, are they good actors or are they as good as the they are they, they are similar to histrionic they're drama extreme drama extremely and they, they they would go the extra mile maybe like to cry and to you know whole bollywood <laughs> whole bollywood indian movie egyptian movie syrian movie all together in one <laughs> okay you know what i mean yeah so it, they're very melodramatic they yes. would uh, very melodramatic personalities and um, so, some like I don't know, like if my description is correct or not. Please correct me if I'm wrong. You're the expert here. But would a narcissistic personality, um, like when they think of approaching you or maybe having you as their partner, whether they're their girlfriend, their like um, you know wife, whatever, uh, they would think like. Uh, of you as um, sort of an ornament, like they would think of you as something like uh, like their watch, like their glasses, like it is something to uh, complete their prestige, their outer look. No, no, not that, not like that. You are to them uh, a second person to make them feel better. Uh, to them, you are a person they use to get them in the spotlight. It's not like there's something that they can own you and put you on a shelf. They're going to use you to try to 
build up their self-worth. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's, they're not like hoarders or uh, having a problem with, uh, like histrionic have a problem with abandonment. That's <laughs> huge, where, like breaking up and they're afraid of losing people. Not narcissists, not the narcissists. They don't care about relationships. They just, they can be living alone all their life most of the time. Usually they end up living alone because nobody can deal with them. But they don't care because to them, it's them and only them. And nobody else matters. No. No. Else. So you're just a pawn they would use and uh, like everyone is very expendable to them. We're all expendable to them. So like nobody really matters. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you matter as long as you can benefit me. The moment the benefit is over to the garbage, I don't care about you. Uh, I wouldn't look twice. I wouldn't look back at you. I don't care uh, yes. where you are. So um, for instance, like if I'm married to someone if I'm narcissistic, I would um, benefit from the image she would give to me. So I would say like, um, when people see me married to such a woman, like whether she's extra pretty, she's very highly educated, she comes from a very uh, classy family, whatever, it, it shows that, oh, well, definitely a great woman like this must be married to a great, an equally great or even a greater man. So this, would they think this way? Like, um, I'm, I'm only attracted to the woman that would make me look greater or just to compliment me. I like greater. No compliment. They don't, they don't like, a couple, they have to be the center of attention. So if you are, to, if two narcissists sit together, it's going to be blood. Oh. There's yeah, it cannot be the same. They use you to get themselves on the top. Well, you, you are like a bridge or a ladder to them. So I would use you as a ladder to get to the roof. And then the moment I get to the roof, I'll throw you away. Exactly. You got it perfectly. That's the best way to explain it. Okay, okay. And, it. Uh, w and they would perform thus in every situation? Like, is it only in the romantic side or also in the professional side as well? No, no, it's every time. It's everything. It's a the personality disorder. Personality disorder means you have this trait in everything, not just one part of your um, persona. It's your personality. That's it. You're with everybody, lover, uh, relationships, friends, uh, friend, family members, children, parents, it's the same all across. And it's, it's there with you from long time ago. So I'm the center of the universe and, and like, you know, there are many satellites around me, but uh, I should always be the center and I should always have the upper hand. Of course, always, you always would win. And by the way, a lot of people, just sorry to interrupt you, but uh, a lot of people think women are the narcissists. Actually, most of them are men, which is uh, surprising because a lot of people think women are mostly narcissists. Actually, men are way more narcissists than women. And Muhammad, we all have a little bit of this. Don't get me wrong. We all have, you know, everybody likes to be, you know, center of attention. Everybody likes to be in a relationship, doesn't want to be abandoned. We all have all of these traits and all these personality disorders. I'm talking about somebody who has it for life. And it's very, oh, here comes the cat. I've been waiting for her all day. Um, so uh, I'm talking about like, it's extremely bad when you have it too much of it. So if you're afraid of abandonment and you live your life afraid of abandonment, that it's paralyzing your life, that's now a personality disorder. Oh, like there is a wide spectrum, but if somebody goes to the extreme, then here, here is a problem. Like if we're somewhere in the beginning of the spectrum, it should be okay. But if we go to the extreme, the very end, then it becomes a disorder. Like, exactly. And then it has to be long term. I mean, if you go through a period of like just it has to be at least six months that you've got like uh, when you come to my clinic, you say I'm depressed. I have to know if you are depressed, really depressed or if you're going through a depressive period because we all get sad. We all go through a little bit of depressive period. If it's been like six months, I'm like, OK, this has been long enough that I think you are now depressed. But if it's only two weeks and you say, yeah, on and off, I'm like, OK, you're not depressed. It's not a disability. It's not a a mental issue you're just going through a period because remember we all have all of these traits but if you live a long time with it it's affecting you for a long term now you need a little bit more of therapy 
you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Yes, I totally do understand what you're saying. Yeah. So um, again, it's it's not only it's not only um, you know quality or how how deep and profound it is, but again, for how long? So time is a factor. So if it's like an um, something that lasted for a period, then maybe it's a temporary disorder, but we cannot really, you know, uh, put a stigma on you, put a label on you as a narcissistic personality, unless this is, this persists. It's something that is, is always there. It's, it's not something that comes and goes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, uh, they're always like this in their, um, you know, uh, love affairs in their professional affairs and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, so from what you're saying here, um, you said that there, like at the beginning, you said that there are a lot of similarities between the narcissistic and the histrionic. Yeah. But uh, what, what is the borderline? What is, what is the most obvious difference between them? There, there are a lot of overlaps, and, and you said it's, it might be very hard to identify them. And some people are like histrionic narcissistic or, or, or vice versa. But exactly. what is the, the clear, fine line between them? Histrionic can love. They can have a relationship. It's going to be hard for them because they're really sensitive. The histrionic people are extremely sensitive. Narcissists will never love and they don't feel shame, they don't feel guilt, they don't have any emotions. See the difference? Histrionic will love, will have an emotional trauma if the person left them. <laughs> Narcissists cause this emotional trauma to people around them. They, don't, they cannot love because they're just abusing people. So the narcissist abuses people, histrionic sometimes gets abused, even though they abuse more but their, their deep insecurities are a little bit different than their deep insecurity of narcissists. That's how you know the difference between the two. It's how they love. So, so like, um, you know, they have some kind of a conscience, like the... the, the, the Histrionic, would, they do. They have some kind of a conscience. They but do. narcissistic, they don't. They don't care at all. No, but, no shame. Most of them are chronic. Like it, they, it has to be chronic. It has to be ongoing. It cannot be like for just a small interval. It has to be for a lifetime. So uh, the narcissistic people, they have no shame and no sense of guilt at all. Yeah, not at all. They, they, don't, don't, care. Care. they don't care at all. Um, okay, would a narcissistic person um, try to conduct a litmus test with you every now and then or try to test your patients to see how much can you take Would they try this game with you if they are looking forward to a permanent relationship like would they try to tame you to be their pet in the future they gaslight you so what they do is they break you so you become their punching bag to break their, your demeanor, they break your personality, they make you feel that you're always guilty, they always uh, make you question your judgments. Um, narcissists will do whatever it takes to break you so you believe that they are your God and that they're always right. Um, the narcissist, I would not be surprised what they will do. They will do anything they can to get themselves to feel good, to get themselves to feel important. And unfortunately, people who I treat mostly are the people who've been in a relationship with a narcissist. Okay. The victims, these are the real victims. Narcissists never go to therapy. They don't think they need it. Yeah, they, they never go to therapy. Okay. Yeah. Never, ever. So they always try to abuse other people, try to manipulate them, brainwash them, just control. So uh, would I say that, uh, would it be correct if I say that, um, a narcissistic personality always loves to be the puppeteer and yeah. everyone around them is a puppet. So they, they should always hold the strings in their fingers. So and they exploit people. That's, that's what they do. They exploit. They exploit people. Yeah. And uh, they would sort of emotionally drain other people and mentally drain them. Um, 
and they intimidate them, they belittle them, they will uh, threaten them, they, they, do, they do unimaginable things, I cannot tell you. I mean, they will take whatever measures. I'm not talking about a psychopath here, I'm not talking about murdering, that's a completely different thing. I'm talking about pretty much destroy the person in front of them to a point where there's no return. The person is now in therapy because they've been a punching bag for all of their life. Because they live in a delusion. You have to remember, narcissists really think they are the god of the universe. And they will make their reality based on their delusions. And their reality is all fake. So whatever it takes for them to justify the feeling of self-importance, they will take every measure. So, without feeling of guilt or shame. Would that mean, again, that um, you, know, they, you said that they have... Um, this, this um, zero feeling of guilt and they, they live in this illusion. Would it be correct, please correct me scientifically, to say that um, they have, um, I don't know, like um, uh, psychosis, some form of psychosis? No. no. Psychosis means they lose part of reality. No, uh, no, I wouldn't say psychosis. Because they're just, they live in an illusion. I'm not talking, like, they know it's reality, but their illusion is like that, yeah, they're so important that they believe if they go somewhere that everybody's looking at them. Even though they could be looking at them, looking disgusted, but to them it's like, ah, oh, they love me, they look at me. But they can tell that this is not reality. I'm not talking about psychosis. That's a different thing. Okay. Yeah, that's different. But well, they, they live in um, fantasy. They are, they are sober, like they are awake. They know where they are. Yeah, it's a fantasy. They just live in a fantasy. Mm -hmm. A self-made fantasy. Exactly. And, uh, how about fidelity? How, how about like, fidelity? How honest are they? Like, uh, what is the possibility of them cheating on their partner? Very possible. Mm -hmm. Their self-worth. Why, you know, to them, it's like they're important. And if they can find another partner who will satisfy them, they will go for it. Remember, no shame and no guilt. Nothing and nothing will make them like they don't feel remorse. So, yes, they do cheat. Yes, they do everything else. If they're not satisfied with the relationship. And usually they're not because they're turned off the other people around them. And if I go and cheat on my partner, I would again... Instead of apologizing, I'd make her feel sorry. So, like, I had to cheat because you're depriving me of this. <laughs> yeah, you're blame. They, they blame you on their misery. Um, they will never see any fault. They never see any mistakes. That's the key thing. They never, never respond good. They're very sensitive to criticism, by the way. Extremely sensitive because it's like, what do you mean I'm not good? Or what do you mean something is wrong with me? They never take it good. Um, so, they will gaslight you okay yeah and um so now that we understand uh, like this narcissistic personality sort of and you said they cannot love they are not people who can love other people they can only no. love themselves so uh, like where does it come from is it like um are they born this way or is, it, or is it an acquired personality or like um, what factors, you know, um, affect where in the spectrum would you fall in narcissism? Um, is it something you're born with again or is it, it, it has to do a lot with your upbringing? And it's all upbringing, Muhammad. There's nobody born bad. So most of the time the narcissists are either been neglected as a child or abused. However, there's some psychologies out there, they think it's something to do with the brain. Um, the frontal, the prefrontal lobe is where it, it regulates our emotions. Some believe it may be something to do with that part of the brain that they cannot control their emotions. But I don't think it's 100% accurate because now we're talking psychopath. A psychopath is having the same issue where they don't understand the difference between someone dying in front of them or someone laughing. They cannot tell um, if, if they're causing pain. So I don't know how accurate this theory is, but I do know for sure they have either been neglected as a child. They, that's why they need that importance and self-worth. They may have been abused or they may have been pampered too much by their parents. It's like um, 
a completely unrealistic expectation by parents sometimes causes this narcissist. But most of what I know, um, I've only treated two or three people. They, it's trauma, childhood trauma, like neglect. Okay. So it can be neglect from parents or maybe in school, in university? In parents usually. No, no, it starts way beyond, where before. Your personality disorder starts before the age of seven. Okay. So okay. most of the time it's the parents. The parents are like they over pampered the child uh, or they completely neglected and ignored the child. Yeah. So we I have one of these two extremes. Yeah. Um, or abuse. Abuse too. Abuse. Okay. And so they have this sort of addictive person, like, you know, desire inside them. So um, I, I never got what I really deserve. So it's time for me now uh, to get what I deserve or I was always treated as a king and this is what I am. So I was treated as a king at home. I should always be a king. So it's either or. <laughs> and I forgot one thing too to tell you with narcissists, they, they do, they're known to hold long grudges. So if you piss them off, 20 years later, they will still do whatever it takes to come back to you. It's like the, the envy is still in them. They're always envious of other people because they don't like competition. If somebody is better than them, they're envious and they really hold long grudges. They're very, very, very bad when it comes to grudges. So you don't want to cross them. It's better to avoid them. No but, matter. But again, I think like it, but if you're submissive, they will still not like you. They would use you, but... You're just like, you know, a napkin. Uh, I'm sorry for the expression. I would just blow my nose in the napkin and throw it away. <laughs> there is one way if you want to know how to, but you have to be ready for this. The only way you can overcome a narcissist relationship. I don't know if I should talk about this because you have to know how to do it. Take control from them. Take away their control. That will drive them nuts. Make them un able to control you or control the person that they're holding, they will, they will break. They have to be controlling. Remember, they manipulate others. So the moment you stand up, you take away their control, they're done. They will go on to the next person. But it takes courage from the person who is the abused, right? To stand up on their feet and to fight back. That's the only way you can break a narcissist. Take away their control. So, uh, so you're referring here that we should be assertive with narcissist person. Should we be assertive or aggressive with them? Well, it depends if you want to keep the relationship or not. So narciss there's no cure to narcissism. There's no pills. There's nothing. There's no cure, only therapy. But therapy works on building their self-esteem again from the beginning. We crush them. We have to completely break them down and rebuild it again. Because remember, there is abuse and there's neglect way deep inside in their, in their personality. So unless you're trained, to be quite honest, um, there's a lot of therapists who don't want to work with narcissists. They refuse to treat narcissists. It's the most mental disorder that everybody hates to treat. Even psychiatrists don't like to work with narcissists. It's the most hated personality to treat because it's it's well known that they're the worst people to come to your office because they try to manipulate a the therapist i personally don't mind them because anna i just nothing affects me anymore i'm like a stone right so but i i got to the point a couple of times when they said bad things to me and i'm like okay that's pretty bad but i didn't care uh, but I can see like a, a therapist taking it personally because they use them as a punching bag. They will gaslight the therapist. They try to catch things on the therapist. They try to break them. So the therapist ends up in therapy <laughs> most of the time. So narcissist is not an easy thing. If you ever get into a relationship with a narcissist, you will know. You will know because you will be the one being abused. But never think that you can fix a narcissist. It has to be a professional that knows how to do it. My only advice, get out. Get out because it's going to break you. It's really, really, really the worst kind of mental disorders out there, narcissist. So whenever you are around a narcissist, you just need to scram, run for your life. <laughs> run for your life. Avoid them. Just avoid them because once they, like a leash, once they hold on to you, 
يعني they will do whatever it takes. They will manipulate you. They will exploit you. They will do whatever it takes to get to what they want without you even knowing. They're so good at it. You don't even know that they're doing this. They're professionals. They're really professionals. They know how to manipulate people. They really, really know. Uh, do they prefer like, um, you know, if we if we think as like of them as predators or hunters, usually yeah. predators and hunters prefer, um, you know, like they, they, they find a lot of pride in chasing hard prey. So like, you know, um, like chasing a rabbit is very easy. It's a very, you know, like peaceful animal. But chasing like, you know, a bull, for example, mm -hmm. it's, it's like it's a bigger prize, but it's very hard. It takes a lot of skill and talent. Does an narcissistic person think this way? Like they would uh, like a bigger challenge? Like, and the more challenging the personality is, the more they would like, you know, really hold tight to it? Whatever it makes them feel more important. So if I am a narcissist, if I'm running after the rabbit, that's not a big thing because that's not going to make me feel my worth much better. But if I was able to hunt a gorilla or a lion, yeah, it's going to be harder, but my self-worth will feel better. Because remember, it's about their self-worth, but makes them feel better. So of course, they probably will go after the harder one, but not to show off to other people. They don't care about other people. It's them. It's like, yeah, I did it. They will show off a little bit later. To them, self-worth how they look in that river narcissist looking in the river how beautiful i am look at me look at me i'm so beautiful look at me um, i'm trying to think of a movie or something that has narcissist in it the only movie that comes to mind is psycho american psycho kind of but not without the blood without the killing pretty much that's how severe they are uh, what like there's a very classic like snow white what can we say that you know uh, the queen is oh, yeah. yeah, oh, Cinderella's mom. I'm trying to think of Cinderella's mom was using her and stuff. She kind of has a narcissist personality. You oh. know what? The queen from uh, Snow White, the queen in Snow White, like she always looks at the mirror, you know, and, and she always asks the mirror who's the fairest in the land. Yeah, but think of, uh, because, you know, I don't, too old for cartoons, but uh, Game of Thrones. Yes, so. the, the queen, uh, not, oh God, I forgot her name. You know what I mean, the, the main queen. Yeah, That's Iron, not, throne. Yeah. Iron Throne, yeah, yeah. She's a narcissist. You see how she did everything? She even, you know, did. she destroyed the whole city just to make her feel better. She killed her brothers, her siblings. She didn't care about anybody, anybody in the family because she wanted to be the queen. That's a narcissist. That's exactly what a narcissist looks like. Charming, double-faced. What was her name? Anyways. Uh, Cersei, Cersei. Her name was Cersei. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Cersei. I gotta watch it again. I just, I would just watch the last one. Yeah, yeah. Um, like she would, she doesn't care. Like even when her son died, okay, yeah. said a little bit, but she carried on. You know, she never, nothing can make her stop. Yep. Like, you know, uh, as, like she only cares for Cersei. Like, this is, I, you know, she, I'm my own love, you know, like, I'm deeply in love with me. That's, that's, that's the, you know, the bottom line. Yeah, here. that's pretty much it. That's a narcissist. Um, wow. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's a personality to watch out. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, for. And again, um, actually, while you're talking, it, it rings a lot of bells, you know, uh, for me, and I think for a lot of people, too. Um, yeah. Like, uh, are there a lot of them out there? Or like, am I just imagining? No, there are a lot. But most people think they're women. That uh, narcissist is actually mostly men. Men are known to be more and they're very high successful men. They're doing amazing in their careers or CEOs. They're, uh, they're up there in their jobs, but they don't have a lot of friends. Uh, friends leave them after a while. Once the friend sees that they're being used, they kind of wake themselves up a little bit and they leave them. So they're always going through a changing of a cycle of friends because in the beginning friends like them, they, they show up the good front, but once friends start to pick up on it, they leave. So 
they're, they have unstable relationships. They have unstable, um, they go through a lot of breakups. And the only time I'm trying to think like it, their bubble burst is when reality hits them sometimes. So let's say I am in my 20s, just to give you an example. I'm a female in my 20s and I'm on TikTok and I'm selling all my beauty products and I'm successful and I have billions of followers and my ego is like blown up. I go into my 30s, I go into my 40s, and then I'm not as popular anymore because I'm older and there are younger girls who are competing with me. When I hit 50s and 60s, reality is going to hit me that, oh my God, it wasn't all about me. It was like age has put me out of the game. Reality will hit then when my bubble burst, but I still will not go to therapy. I will have a miserable life. I will not accept it. It's impossible for me to accept there's something wrong with me. Narcissists never see that they have an issue. That's the problem with them. They never go to therapy. So, uh, never go. Sorry. Uh, but never least, actually, I'm sorry to cut you off, but um, just popped into my mind here. Um, and um, the possibility of them um, having a depression or the possibility of them committing suicide. What is the likelihood of that? Is that very possible, like not possible? You know, it is possible, but not like histrionic. Histrionic is a lot more because histrionic are a little bit more sensitive. Remember, They're, they they go through a major um, depression and suicidal thoughts when somebody abandons them. Borderline, the biggest uh, personality disorder that ends up in suicide is borderline and then histrionic. Narcissists, pretty much people around them end up killing themselves, but that nar- not the narcissist. Okay. I don't, know how, I don't know how to say it. And, and there, there are no pros for this personality. Right? And unfortunately, there's no cure. Seriously, there's no cure, except for talk therapy. It has to be talk therapy. Even hypnotherapy may not work. Like hypnotherapy is by itself is not good. I have to do a lot of talking and talking and talking and t- because I'm trying to open them up to realize that they are wrong. I cannot tell them they are, they are wrong. They have to figure it out on themselves, but for them to accept that there is something wrong with them. No. So I have to go the other way by trying to point out or help them find their trauma and their abuse and their neglect and try to build their self-esteem a little bit and a little bit. So it takes maybe a year or two for them to really kind of wake up. They're like, what the hell was wrong with me? How could I do this to people? The guilt starts to fill in. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Because deep inside, deep inside, uh, remember Muhammad, nobody's born bad. That's my motto. Nobody is born bad. You may hate the person's personality. You may hate the person's behavior, but never hate the person because you don't know what they went through. Keep this in mind. No matter how bad the person is to you, you don't know what they went through. So never judge, never label, never tell someone you're an idiot, you're, you know, narcissist, never tell them this because you don't know if this person was abused or raped as a child or the parents locked them in the basement for 10 years of your life, of their lives. So you don't know what kind of trauma this person has. If you ever feel that the person is not is struggling or having personality disorders, talk to them and let them go themselves and seek therapy. Convince them to go, but don't say you are narcissist or you are bad. Just say, I feel worried about you. I feel you're not happy. Do you want to talk? You know how, you know what I mean? You have to be there for them to trust, for them to trust you enough to start to open up. And then maybe later on, they will go on their own to therapy. Never say you, always say I. I'm worried about you. Okay. I I know how you feel. So uh, don't point a finger like, um, so that um, you have, you feel for them. There's some kind of sympathy or like some kind of mutual feeling there, but you're not pointing fingers. Like you're not, you're, you're not blaming them. You're not stigmatizing them. Exactly. Never say you, just keep yeah. this in mind. Never say you are, just say, I am worried. I am concerned. I want you to be happy. Say no. I. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, these Really, thank you very much for this interview. As usual, it's uh, so it's great to have you, and um, really looking forward to having you, uh, you know, in our future episodes as well with more personalities. Because 
uh, personalities is just like the name of the program. They're, they're spectra personalities. It just smart never ends. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. <laughs> the headline, I can see, I can just imagine the headline of the, of this video on your YouTube channel or your Facebook. Tag your narcissistic friends. <laughs> <laughs> just put it out there. Thank you, Muhammad. I really look forward to this. So hopefully okay. next sec next, um, uh, part maybe we can talk about the next type of personality there is like the di different cluster these are really interesting i think people would like that absolutely, absolutely. Thank, thank you, you very much. much thank you very much and um dear viewers you know just to uh sum up and i'll start from what odis said at the very end um you know, okay, maybe we might think that this narcissistic or histrionic personalities are like dangerous or like evil people, but nobody's born evil. So um, every predator was a prey at some time. You know, uh, every aggressor was a victim at some point in their life. So, um, okay, we should, we should try to avoid them, okay, not, not to be, like, be friends with them very much, not to have these intimate bonds with them, but at the same time, we shouldn't treat them with disdain and try to uh, sort of, you know, like, um, marginalize them completely. So we should you know, try just to protect ourselves, but the antidote again, just like Udis said, is to be assertive. So stand for your rights. Uh, don't, don't fight them, but uh, just so like have a brick wall, a very, very, you know, solid brick wall and stand for your rights, draw the line. So say, no, you cannot go further than that. That is the end here. Um, and again, if this person is dear to you, there is a way out. It's, it's, it's not a very, um, you know, the road is not paved with roses. It's, it's a very bumpy road and it's, it's very rugged. But again, uh, there is a way, there is a possibility. Um, but don't point fingers, don't, don't put a stigma on them. But just like she said, Try to tell them, I feel sorry for you. You know, I want you to have help. Because, you know, we as humans, you and I and everyone else, we are, we are social animals. Uh, we are not made to just live alone. And uh, this is the whole beauty of, of, of it all. Like, you know, like the name of, uh, of this program and, and, and the page and everything. It's, it's Spectrum, Canadian Spectrum, or like Love Spectra, uh, you know. So it's, it's um, the variety is the beauty. You know, you cannot live in a um, monotonous life, just hear one tone, ah, uh, all the time, or a monochromatic life, a uh, life that has only one color. Um, it would be so boring, so dull, and... Uh, would eventually depress you. So um, if you know that person, try to talk to them, try to bring them to therapy, try to, you know, um, and if you hate, always remember that. Hate the behavior, don't hate the person, okay? They're evil behaviors, but no one is, is born evil. There must be a reason for that, so, um, you know, uh, there's always a room for rehabilitation for them, psychological rehabilitation. They, they can, uh, they need to be like, you know, uh, restored, renovated, <laughs> if you wish. Um, at the very end, thank you very much for being with us tonight. And um, until we meet again, have a very pleasant time. Thank you very much.